There we are. All right. Good evening and welcome to tonight's live virtual workshop presented by the Howell Carnegie District Library and SCORE. I'm Brandi Cambasco, Adult Services Librarian here at the library. Thank you again for joining us this evening. I have a few housekeeping items to share before we start the presentation, which is scheduled to run until 8 p.m. tonight. During the workshop, please share any questions for the presenter or report any te technical issues you may have in the chat. The chat will be monitored throughout the workshop. You can also unmute yourself as you've already done, thank you. Um, if you do have a question for the presenter, please share. This program is being recorded and the recording will be available on the library's YouTube channel soon after this live virtual pro program concludes. If you don't want your video in the recording, go ahead and turn that off. Um, you can click the uh, stop video, make sure there's a red flash to the camera icon in your lower left corner of your Zoom window. This is the second of our virtual small business workshops to score this fall. There uh, will be a link in the chat that I will share to get to the rest of the, the ones in the series, as well as the recording of our first workshop from last month. And don't forget to visit our website, www.howellibrary.org, to discover more upcoming events from the Howell Carnegie District Library. And now, Without further ado, I'll turn it over to our presenter tonight, Craig Leslie of SCORE. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, yeah, good, good evening, Susan. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us today. And uh, we're going to uh, get the, uh, my video here, there we go. And uh, from the beginning, so this is um, uh, one of the um, presentations in a series that SCORE does across the country. Uh, this is, we call it simple steps to growing your business. And I, I wanna thank uh, Brandy and the Howell Library for partnering with us to uh, make, make that happen here uh, today. Um, we're, uh, uh, American Express uh, helped uh, develop this program, and we appreciate the partnership that we have with them. Uh, it is a, a program that we edit uh, to meet our personal or our local needs. So there's a fair amount of information there that's provided by the Ann Arbor chapter of SCORE, uh, unique to, to that chapter. Um, I'm Craig Leslie. Uh, that's my email address, and we will make a copy of this presentation available if you want one uh, after um, this uh, the program uh, through Brandy uh, so you don't have to write too much down uh, and then my partner presenter today is uh, Rick Schofield and that was uh, uh, Brandy uh, Tambasco who was speaking there and those are our, our three emails. Um, this is uh, designed to be an in-person presentation there's some worksheets but that we would use if we were together, but it's been adapted for this webinar format. Uh, send questions, uh, as Brandy mentioned to her, or just uh, unmute your device and shout it out. Uh, and then um, we'll stick around for questions at the end. Uh, the, the, uh, this presentation is, uh, our workshop is just one of the things that we do. Uh, we, if you are interested in finding out uh, more about uh, selling for your program or any other business issues you have. Uh, we do a lot of individual mentoring. It's actually uh, our favorite thing to do uh, after these webinars uh, where we can sit down and work with individuals on their business questions. It's important to uh, remind people that SCORE is a volunteer organization. There's never a fee uh, to uh, come to us for advice or for support. Uh, whether we meet with you one time or a dozen times. Uh, in the Ann Arbor chapter, we've got um, almost 20 mentors that are available with um, a myriad of different uh, experiences and, and uh, skills that they can bring to bear on your business issues. Um, we, um, we do the free mentoring. We can do it face-to-face -face or with Zoom or emails or phones. We have other workshops lots of resources and this is the uh, the website for our chapter where you can see uh, all the resources we have and the other uh, webinars that we uh, provide over the 
the course of the next few months. Um, so if you could, could you uh, tell me a little bit about your business and what, what, what primarily caused you to sign up today to, um, uh, to learn or to learn more about selling, if you would be willing to share? Or throw it into the... Uh, hang on, I, I've got a, I've, I've got something going on here. There, so can you hear me a little bit better, Susan? Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, business is, is uh, I'm thinking about going back into the cleaning uh, business, janitorial maid service. Well, I'll try to uh, work that into uh, the presentation here today. Uh, it, when when we uh, when at the end of this workshop, we'll be able to talk about distribution channels, uh, how to evaluate your sales pro process, uh, who should be on your sales team, how to motivate them, motivate them, uh, and benchmarking your tools uh, and implementing uh, sales and CRM tools. Uh, we're not. Um, for very small businesses, uh, a simple uh, record keeping system is fine. You don't have to spend a lot of money on uh, a client relationship management, which is what CRM stands for. But it'll uh, this will give you an idea about how to how to uh, extend your uh, extend your reach. Uh, ta -ta. Um, all right, so first we'll talk about expanding your distribution channels. Uh, what is the distribution channel? It's, it's how you get your product or service to the end user. Um, you need to, it helps you build the brand. Um, it can decrease the risk of selling because you have somebody that's a professional uh, that does it for a living uh, that can uh, help you reach more customers. Uh, potentially, if, you, if you're paying that uh, distribution channel properly, it can increase your profits because it increases your volume. Uh, it does require careful research at the front end because not all people that or organizations that say they will help you sell actually do help you sell. They, they may have other products that, or services that they push instead of yours. And just signing up somebody to help you uh, get the word out doesn't necessarily mean that they will do that. So it really uh, retire, requires constant attention ongoing uh, to make sure that people that are saying that they're helping you promote your product uh, really are. Um, some examples of distribution channels, uh, have your own sales team. Uh, a lot of people are relying now on online sales. Uh, that's good for some organizations, but it's not good uh, for others. Uh, catalog sales are still popular. My mailbox was full of catalogs getting ready for the holiday season. Uh, and then some people are, are into the retail business and having a, an office or, or a, a place where people could come and visit you and see your products and services is the way to go. Um, it all, it, it, every business has its own uh, best way to do things. Uh, and um, you, uh, uh, it's important that you pick the one for you. We, the, the program that we did uh, last month was how to market your business. And we talked a lot more uh, about uh, websites and, um, uh, and chat rooms and using Facebook uh, for uh, uh, 
uh, for marketing, uh, as well as traditional advertising methods. And if uh, we won't talk about those today because we don't have that much time, uh, but uh, go back and have Brandy help you find that um, uh, presentation of marketing your business is something that you, you want uh, to learn more about. Uh, indirectly, uh, you may uh, have a wholesaler, a distributor, or a dealer network to help push your product or service. Uh, you may partner with a retailer. Uh, there may be people that are in a business similar to yours where you can partner with them and uh, together add value for each of you uh, to uh, uh, where uh, they're providing a, a similar service. And if, they're, if you're helping them, they will help you. So sometimes those win-win partnerships are, are uh, great. Uh, a value-added reseller, uh, basically... They're going to take your product and move it on. If you're into the service business, that's not necessarily what you're looking for. Uh, uh, consultants can be helpful. Uh, we would encourage you to try SCORE as your consultant uh, because the price is right, which is zero. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, some, uh, some folks uh, have a manufacturer's rep where they're on they, they're independent. Uh, you don't, they're not your sales representative. They're not your employee, but they uh, are, a, they take your product and other or service and others and package them and go out and use the relationships they have uh, to, to promote your product uh, pr and promote your service to uh, the industries where they have those relationships. And that can be um, uh, very uh, useful at, at some times. Because people buy, and I'll talk about this more, people buy things from people they know and they like, and manufacturers reps are people that uh, have those relationships already in hand and uh, can use those to leverage uh, your product and get access to uh, people that, um, uh, that uh, can now see your application. So I'm, I think everybody can see me, right? Um, Okay, all right. Um, that, so we'll go, we'll go to the next slide. Um, I gotta get the chat off. Um, so, um, and then I see Michael joined us. So are there any distribution channels that you're using right now uh, that anybody would like to talk about or ask a question about? If not, we'll just, Move right along here. Okay, so when you're when you're um, looking at how you should distribute your product, um, you look at the, the most successful sales organizations are problem solvers. A lot of the clients that I help and score are think that that selling is is pushing products or services that people don't need. And that's really never the case. People don't buy um, things that they don't need or they don't want. Uh, they, they buy things that solve problems or make their lives better. Uh, and, and if you approach the, the sales um, challenge as, as being a problem solver uh, and a fixer, as opposed to a, 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 a seller of, of unneeded stuff, uh, you'll be much more successful. So spend time understanding your customer's needs. Uh, that, and that's the end user. Who, who really uses your product? It may not be the person that buys it, or, or it may not be your distributor. It is that end user. And what are their needs and how are, and think about how your product really uh, best meets those needs. And that becomes the basis of your sales presentation and your marketing uh, message. Um, then who is your ideal customer? Uh, the, there are not just, you can't say all the people in Washtenaw County or all the people in Michigan are my potential customers. That's never the case. It's always there are people that have, uh, live, that, that have certain lifestyle uh, that, that where they ha need services or they need goods, uh, they, they have a certain income level, uh, they have, um, uh, they're in a certain community. So 
understand who your ideal customer is or who your target market is and make sure that you're using your selling time to focus on those people first. And then once you get one of those people, your ideal customer, then you think, well, how do I find more people that are my ideal customer? And then you're, you're that, that way you're spending your sales time working with prospects and not suspects. And I would just add um, one thing to that, if I, if I could, Craig, when you come, when you've defined your ideal customer, if you want to find uh, ways to contact them or where they exist or what the demographic is in the area, the libraries offer great sources for databases, reference databases that will help you say, you know, my ideal customer is this age, this uh, income, whatever it is that you decide is your ideal customer, go to the libraries and ask them for help uh, in, in, in actually getting some lists that might help you then just go forward and contact those folks. Just wanted to add that, Craig. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Brandy is really good at, at that and uh, is there to, to help in that regard. Um, so the next is uh, customers kind of influence the how you, you distribute it. How, how, how do customers want to buy? Uh, do, they, do they want uh, to deal with uh, a salesperson one-on-one? -on -one? Uh, would they really prefer to... Um, uh, Okay, we had another person join, good. Would they really prefer? No? I'm muted. Are you okay now? I'm okay now? Okay, yeah. all right. Um, uh, or uh, uh, if, and if they are buying online, uh, do you have your own store uh, or are you, you want to make your product available uh, with an, of the broader online retailer. Uh, so think about um, whether you want to provide your, your goods or your product uh, is into a, an eBay or, or a Amazon or somebody where they're, you're not uh, selling it direct to the uh, client uh, or the end user that somebody middle person is helping you with that. Uh, I had one score client who started a, a product that was used in weddings. It was a box that you put money and checks into. And she uh, started selling so many of them. She had to make, they had to move their cars out of uh, their, their garage and start uh, the whole family started making these boxes in their garage. And that, then they eventually had to go get a, a, a an outside uh, warehouse type building to do all the construction. Uh, but they got, they ended up trying to find somebody who would build the boxes for them because it not only dominated their house, but it dominated their lives. And that wasn't really what they got in the business for. Uh, so uh, on the one hand, it was a nice problem for them to have. On the other hand, they, it, uh, they needed to find partners and affiliates that could do critical parts of that um, uh, business for them uh, as as they grew. So be that'd be a nice problem to have for each of you, uh, but be prepared for for that uh, going forward. You don't have to do it all yourself. There are people who are experts in, in that regard. Um, why am I? All right. So when you think about how you're going to sell. Uh, there are distribution channels. You have to think about who are your competitors, um, uh, what, where, where you want to sell it. Uh, then think about your business. This is almost a business plan type thing, which stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Uh, what uh, th you will have competition. Uh, you will be stronger than them in some areas, weaker than them in others, and. Um, uh, we, we could spend a whole hour on SWOT analysis, uh, but we won't here tonight. Barriers to entry. Uh, how hard is it to get into your uh, ideal customer? Uh, what are your costs? Obviously, your competitors are going to affect uh, uh, what your price can be. Uh, but if you've got to make sure that you've got some profit left over uh, after you calculate in your costs, and take it to market at a competitive price. Uh, what your sales and marketing expenses are gonna be. 
and then uh, channel conflicts. What that means is that you're selling your product in two or three different ways. Let's say you're selling direct and you also have a distributor. Well, that distributor is, is not going to be happy probably with you selling direct and you have to be prepared for answering those questions. So either you have to, maybe you, you will have to um, uh, commit to uh, working a deal with, with that distributor so that they are, they, they don't feel your direct sales as a threat to them. Or you say, well, I'll sell direct in Michigan and you sell direct in other states, but be prepared for that. Uh, and uh, it's definitely something that can be managed, uh, but is, is some, it comes up uh, constantly as we go. Assess options and prioritize, ease of entry, geographic pr proximity, your financial goals and risks, estimated sales volume, how much you're gonna, uh, how much are you gonna sell? And is that gonna create the, uh, the, the financial income uh, uh, that you're looking for? I helped uh, uh, a client who was in a service business here recently figure out what her financial situation was. She had clients telling her that she wasn't charging enough for her service. And when we got done, she realized that for every hour she worked, she was losing five dollars. Uh, and um, so she it, she went back and said, "Well, I guess I do have to change my uh, my rates." Uh, but she had not considered a lot of the costs associated with the business, insurance, uh, her travel time, uh, and and several other elements. So once we figured out what the total cost of of the product that she was, or the service she was delivering, then she realized that in fact, she was uh, uh, losing money as opposed to making money and with all the effort she was putting in. It's, a, it's very important. And then management experience and staffing capabilities are all uh, important uh, things. Just how, how, how good are you at your business? How much time do you have? And if you have staff, are you really utilizing them in an effective way? Because that all affects your, your price and it affects your costs, which means that your bottom line will be affected uh, by all of any and all of these elements. Um, uh, I won't spend too much time on channel partners, except to say that um, you need to provide expert support. You can't just sign somebody up to market your goods or service. Uh, and expect them to be good at it or expect them to understand your business as well as you would hope that they do. So they may not be representing you uh, in the way that you would like to be. So that requires training. It requires uh, looping back and make, making sure they're doing it the right way. Uh, and, and that, in fact, you, they are acting like a partner so that it's win-win. Uh, and uh, I, my personal experience with that is that it's a constant uh, uh, requirement to keep that um, expert uh, support going uh, so that they are positive about representing uh, your, um, you to their, to their clients. And don't forget, nobody cares about your business as much as you do. You're the person that drives it. You got the vision. You got the enthusiasm. At least we hope so. And so nobody is going to have that. And the, the training that, that uh, Craig is mentioning, the support for those other people is really crucial to try to get them that, that same kind of passion as much as possible ignited in them. So don't um, uh, don't forget to do that or, or, or ignore that because you won't have successful help if, if you do. Exactly. Yep. Good. God. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so evaluating your sales process, there's five steps to, to um, the sale. First, you have to get a lead. Uh, you've got to um, uh, get people to know about your business and to uh, you've got to identify people that may want to uh, listen to your pitch. You've got to uh, prospect that. Now, that, that's a fact finding. It's much easier today to find out about potential clients than it was when Rick and I started in the business because of the, all the information available on the internet. Uh, you can really get an idea whether somebody's a prospect or a suspect uh, by doing the research, going to also the library can provide a lot of information. 
um, reaching out to customers and client, making that contact, whether you do it yourself or your distributor does it, uh, very important to be prepared, have your homework done, make sure you've looked at their website, you've looked the people up on LinkedIn, uh, and that, uh, that you're, you're making the highest best use of your time and your prospects time uh, in that uh, sales encounter. Then negotiating, make sure you know what you're willing to do uh, and, and what a good deal for you is before you uh, start negotiating uh, levels of service or price or quantity or volume. And then uh, don't be afraid to ask for the order. Uh, the closing the deal is very important. Uh, it's not just the sales process. It's, uh, it, it's, it's getting to the deal. It's getting to the close. And uh, if you've done your homework, if you've got a good lead, uh, you've done the research on whether this the person is a prospect. Uh, you've had positive interaction with them. You've negotiated in a win-win way. Then, then asking for the business comes naturally and shouldn't be that hard. Uh, keeping in mind that you're there to solve a problem, not sell something that they don't need. A promise of customer service uh, and, and uh, not only good follow through during the sales process so that it goes well, but also a promise to provide good service uh, throughout the, the, the after the sale uh, is very important. You've got to be prepared to do that and send the message that that's uh, what they get when they work with you. Um, so lead generation can come from a lot of ways, uh, advertising, uh, your website, um, search engine optimization is a whole new world. SEO, it's called. Score uh, Ann Arbor has a special uh, webinar like this just on, on that uh, topic. And we won't spend much time on it, except um, if uh, you, you need to understand search engine optimization even before you pick the name of your company, if you're going to promote it uh, online or, or hope that your website will help you uh, grow your business. Uh, emails, a lot of times people will respond more to an email than they will a phone call. Uh, social media, very important these days. Uh, it's not just to keep track of your children and grandchildren's activities, uh, but there are groups of people that you may want to be part of. Uh, I'm active on LinkedIn, for example, uh, which is a professional, hopefully professional uh, version of, of uh, uh, or, or Facebook-like activity, but just for business people. Uh, I find that to be more and more useful as time goes along. Uh, the, sometimes the best way to market or get a lead is from an existing happy customer. So don't be afraid to ask a customer uh, who you're, you have already, if they have friends, relatives, colleagues, people in the same business who would benefit from the service that you're providing them. Uh, networking and trade shows are, are important. Uh, they're, um, um, there's that, that's a, a whole seminar in itself in how to prepare to go to a trade show. It takes a lot of work ahead of time uh, so that you know what your networking goals and objectives are before you go to that trade show so you can achieve them and make the highest best use of that time. Direct mail is very popular, uh, still, I think, useful in a lot of ways. And, um, and just public relations is um, uh, getting out there and getting yourself known and being comfortable in your business community. Uh, it, it just pays to show up. Uh, and that uh, it doesn't matter what the, the setting is, but showing up and, uh, and uh, having business cards in your pocket uh, and, and constantly expanding your, your contacts uh, is an important, whether it's trade shows, social media, um, whatever, you get out there and, and represent your business in the most positive way and frequent way possible. Uh, prospecting, um, a phone call or cold calls uh, is absolutely a last resort in modern times. It used to be how things were done. But nowadays, there's no reason to make a cold call. Uh, there is a reason to call somebody that you've done research on and say, I see uh, what business you're in. I really like your website. I see that you're growing. 
I, I, I think that we can help you grow even more. Um, obviously, emailing, uh, texting is becoming more uh, more valuable. Uh, people, especially young people, are responding to text as as opposed to email. Uh, and um, obviously, we've already talked about in person network, social network, direct mail referrals. That's almost a. But you're always you should always be prospecting, and that's um, a little bit. You know, it, it goes beyond what we talked about on that previous slide, but obviously there's a theme here uh, that that just doing one thing is in this day and age is not enough. You have to have some mix of all of these uh, elements uh, in your in your prospecting and sales strategy. Um, recent in keeping with you've got to show up. The this is very recent here. I uh, heard this on on an interview actually on NPR here not too long ago, the CEO of the largest advertising company in the United States uh, was asked how, what he thinks about remote work. And he said, well, it's fine. It's just, I can't, except for two things. I can't win a new client and I can't sell a new idea. And I started thinking about that. I said, wow, you know, that isn't that what selling is all about? So he, uh, so while it is important to be careful in this uh, pandemic period, uh, it's also important to uh, find a way to safely get out there and uh, be with people uh, who uh, are in need of your, uh, your, of your service. Uh, those relationships are everything and uh, you need to grow the, the contact list in your phone and in your, your uh, whatever your sales uh, uh, lead uh, system is. You've got to grow it every day, and you can do best do that by being out there, making yourself available, and meeting new people. Yeah, and if I might, Craig, a little earlier, Craig, we had to comment that people buy from people they trust, and I think it's a, a whole lot easier. You, you form first impressions on people when you meet them, and it's so much easier to learn to trust somebody or to have a sense that this is a good person, and maybe I'll buy from them. If you can create that kind of a sense in a person, it's much easier to do face to face than over Zoom or over any kind of remote uh, device. So I think that's a great quote uh, from that uh, CEO, Craig. I uh, had not read it before, but it's a wonderful quote. It's very true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So all right, um, they were all right. So thank. Uh, so how do you qualify a prospect? Well, you you is it a and my, this is my favorite. Is it a prospect or a suspect? Um, you, you, you do it by research and you, you do it by finding out about whether that, uh, th that potential client is, uh, is growing, whether they've got the money to pay, uh, whether they need your service, uh, you, your time is limited as a business owner and you don't have time to spend with suspects. So it's very important to spend some time finding out who your prospects are and then targeting them, uh, in a disciplined way. Uh, and then if you, if you're lucky enough and you've done it, you've contacted them, you've set that initial meeting, uh, then, uh, make sure that that initial meeting is, um, uh, is valuable, uh, or a valuable use of the time for your, your prospect, your prospect and, and for yourself, uh, that, uh, there's no reason in this day and age when you can't really have some good ideas and, uh, show ways to be helpful. Uh, to um, uh, to that client right in that initial meeting, uh, and then uh, est start to establish that relationship uh, so that they become comfortable with you and will honor you with uh, with their business uh, in uh, uh, as soon as possible. Uh, negotiating, uh, know your goals. Uh, you want the business, uh, but you want profitable business. Uh, you you need to know what your customers' needs are. Um, you, uh, that because they, they may put a, a much higher value on the service or good that you're providing than you think. Uh, and so the more you understand their need and what they're like, what if you were selling semiconductors to the auto industry right now, they have a real need for semiconductors. They're having to wait over 30 weeks for them. And if you were, if you had some good semiconductors that worked in cars right now, uh, I'll bet you you're, uh, you'd have a little upward uh, flexibility in the price. 
be prepared uh, for them to say that your price is too high or they're not ready to buy right now uh, uh, and what your response is that. Uh, be prepared to get up and walk away. Uh, it's really hard when you really need business, uh, but you can get in a lot of trouble with too much bad business. Uh, and uh, it's almost worse or is worse than uh, not enough good business. Uh, selling is a win-win uh, situation. Win-lose situations don't last uh, and you can't build good relationships unless you have created a win-win situation and get your client to agree that it is win-win. Uh, if you're in the housekeeping business and you're the people whose homes you're helping uh, clean or that you're cleaning, they, they, they need to be proud of that and happy that you're there helping them and uh, whatever other service you're providing, this has gotta be win-win. Um, the uh, tactics for closing, don't be afraid to say, look, we can really help you. And I think that if you choose us to serve that need or to fill that, pro that hole in your product line, uh, you, you get them to agree to that. Uh, they understand that, it's, uh, uh, that the quality is there reinforce the, the value of the good or service you're providing, be empathetic, uh, know what their needs are, but also know when to stop. Another one, another way to say that is know when to shut up. Um, a lot of people make the sale and then keep on talking and talk themselves right out of the sale. Uh, so when you put that, uh, I really want your business, can we agree to that today? Then, then stop, be quiet, uh, because who knows, they may have been wanting to say, yes, I want to do business, but have not been able to get a word in edgewise. Um, so be prepared for price discussions. Uh, a lot of times people will uh, say that they're a decision maker and they're not. In the business world today, a lot of decisions, unfortunately, are made by committee. Uh, so you've got to understand the dynamics of that whole committee. And, and, who, and whether or not the decision maker is actually on the committee or whether they're just researchers that will be making a recommendation to the final decision maker. Um, if you've done your work, um, uh, your homework, and they really are a prospect, then you shouldn't have the problem that they don't need your service or product because they, um, uh, they uh, 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 wouldn't shouldn't have taken the meeting in the first place and you shouldn't have gone after them. Some of it is fear of making a decision, uh, fear of making the wrong decision. Uh, Rick, I bet you've run into that a lot of times where, where your clients have uh, a culture of they, they, they don't, they, they say good job. So they kind of reward um, uh, good decisions. And instead of treating bad decisions as a lesson learned, they tend to punish them. Uh, have you, Rick, have you run into that in your business? Oh, well, most of the times, you know, my business, I'm selling to the automakers and their suppliers. So most of the time, the, the, the one, the not the decision maker is, is one that we have to pay the most attention to. Can this, people, can this person really decide? Because a lot of larger companies, you know, they pass the buck in many cases. And, um, um, and they also are afraid to make a decision that's the wrong one. Uh, so certainly, yeah, I've run into all those kinds of things, Craig. Um, still do. Yeah. Yep. So be, so we're, uh, they, they're classic and this list won't, won't, uh, won't change and you need to be prepared for that uh, at all times. All right, um, are, are there any, uh, we've got some uh, participants here. Has anybody had a, a challenge and a close that uh, in the past that they'd be willing to share that we could talk about for a minute or two? Uh, hearing none, we'll move right on. Uh, customer service. Acquiring a new customer costs five times more than keeping an existing one. Uh, I believe that to be true uh, historically and certainly true going forward. Um, you, um, it requires uh, follow up with the client to make sure they're happy. You've got to jump right on top of problems. Uh, nowadays, uh, it's that people send you an email or a text or leave you a voice message with the problem and they want that answer right away. Uh, and um, that's, um, so it's very critical to be responsive uh, in a way that, that your client uh, expects to be responded uh, to. 
you build relationships at all levels within the organization. I'm a big believer of this. You, you need to know all of the, the, the people at the front desk, uh, the people in the plant, the people throughout the whole organization, because they, um, they all have opinions and they all influence decisions. Uh, and they, uh, they're all going to, uh, they can be very helpful to you as a supplier uh, if, you're, if you have relationships throughout the, the whole client uh, organization. Um, we, uh, the, and also at all, not only all levels of the, of their, of the client's company, but all levels of, um, of people within your company, uh, they, um, I, I'm going to, there'll be a slide here later on that talks about that. So I'm, I won't, um, I won't belay that, uh, you you should have some system to keep track of, uh, all the client relationships. Uh, know who they are. Now, some of these are more sophisticated than what a lot of uh, startup businesses need, uh, but definitely you've got to have a list. You've got to have a system to follow up, and you've got to know the the names of the people. You should know their birth dates. You should know their spouses' names, their kids' names, their dogs' names, uh, and um, uh, and just essentially be empathetic and be part of their uh, of, of their um, uh, circle of friends and suppliers. Uh, and that also helps you get referrals and testimonials. Uh, it's easier to sell additional products and services to a current client than it is to, um, uh, to go sell a new product to a new client. Uh, so uh, think about that as you uh, think about your product mix. Stay in touch, follow up, follow up, and follow up. And I just I, that one I would speak to from personal experience. So we, we I, I'm an electronics business in England. And one of the things that we've done in the past is tried to sell to a variety of segments, uh, air, uh, defense, uh, rail. And our, but our main business has been specialty automotive. And that's where we have now decided to focus. Instead of having salespeople in all these other areas, we're focusing on the current customers we have, current customers we have, because if you build those relationships, that's where our growth is going to come from. We don't need as many salespeople. We need to take care of those customers. But it's it, it actually our whole sales strategy is now based on growing current customers instead of trying to find new customers. And, and I think that uh, that that's working very well for us. Um, so that's just from personal experience. Well, I uh, I had one. One, I'll throw out a personal experience. I, I had a large client uh, and I was the youngest person representing uh, uh, my company in, in that particular market. Uh, so a lot of times I had to wait to get in to see the decision maker. And so I would hang around and talk to all the people in all the cubicles out in the bullpen, if you will. And then one day, one day, the, one of the guys in the bullpen got promoted and he was in the corner office. And he called me up and said, could you come to see me tomorrow? And I said, sure. And I came in and said, congratulated him on his promotion. And he said, Craig, you were the only person that ever came in here and talked to all of us uh, worker bees. We all really like you. And we're going to try to figure out a way to get you more business. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, and, and it took them about a year, but they did. And uh, it worked out really well, but it was because I, I looked at every human being there as, as, as a customer and important and interesting. Uh, and they, they recognized that and appreciated it and eventually uh, rewarded it. Um, so, uh, and I didn't, I didn't do that in just one place. I tried to do it everywhere I went and it seemed to seem to make a difference. Um, your sales team, uh, a lot of time, the smaller the business, the more likely it is to be you, the owner, um, the, uh, one of the biggest things that I find as a score mentor is that the owner of a company spends too much time doing the stuff they like, which is providing the, making the goods or providing the service and not enough time doing outreach to grow the business, uh, that they shy away from, and they don't realize it until you ask them to sit down and look at their last week or two weeks or month 
in terms of what hours they devoted to what elements of the business. So if you are, if you are the, the, the person that runs the business, you're also the chief salesperson, you've got to make sure that you're devoting time to sales and outreach so that your uh, business has a chance to grow. Existing staff, um, uh, I, I believe that all employees should support sales or are part of the sales team. When you tell that to people that work uh, on an assembly line or work uh, processing papers in an insurance office or whatever, it makes them nervous because they say, well, I'm, I'm not a salesperson. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm doing this other stuff. When in fact, um, they, they are a salesperson just because they're making a good product or they're doing things efficiently with quality uh, outcomes so that you have their efforts to brag about when you're talking to those customers. And, and I've, I've found that, that, um, a, that a, a, a company where they all know that, that um, I can't afford to pay you if you aren't helping me sell is a much more successful company than somebody who thinks selling and client relationships is somebody else's responsibility. Um, your website uh, is very important. Uh, people check that first to see if they want to do business with you. So spend the time and the money on that to make it sure that it's current and up to date. Um, and um, maybe you have a dedicated sales staff. Once you start growing, uh, make sure that they're in, uh, uh, that's an option. Uh, you may have outside consultants or representatives, but it's how best to relate to your target customers. There are, there are some businesses where the decision makers are mostly um, uh, women, for example, then you should probably consider having uh, uh, women on your sales staff so that they, they can be empathetic and they can relate. Uh, and um, so it, it, it's a good idea to make sure that your, that your sales team, whether it's your employees or yourself, um, match up in a, in a, in a good positive win-win way with your, your target uh, customers. Um, so uh, that, that, that's, a, uh, that's it's, it's important. Uh, and uh, it's easy to, if people like and trust people uh, who uh, are, are, that they can uh, relate to. Um, all right. Um, so setting sales goals, how big do you want to be? How big can you really be? Uh, set some goals for each set, uh, step of the sales process. Uh, that is, um, uh, it can be as simple as I'm going to make, uh, uh, I'm going to do what I have to do to have four appointments every week, or I'm going to make sure my salespeople have eight appointments each every week. Uh, and to do that, and I, I want them to be with target customers, not just any old customers. And then I'm going to measure those outcomes. Did, did I take time as a business owner to make those contacts uh, to grow the business? Uh, and if not, why not? Uh, and how did that go? Did I get, were they the good customers? Were they prospects or suspects? And then apply best practices and techniques to the sales process. If you do have a couple salespeople or you have distributors, and one of them is more successful than the other, we'll try to understand why that is uh, and, and, and get other people to emulate those practices uh, on a constantly uh, evolving way. Don't, don't do the same thing uh, constantly. Uh, somebody said that's the definition of insanity, yeah. doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Uh, so be flexible, adjust, the market is always changing. Your customers are always changing. Their needs are changing. So make sure you're adjusting your approach and your offering uh, to, to stay in sync with what the market needs are. Uh, right now, the, if you, you, with COVID, if you were in the office or home cleaning business, you would definitely want to make sure that your customers understood that you you were uh, sanitizing things in a way that would help uh, mitigate the, the risk of COVID, for example. Um, we have one client that is now using, uh, they're, they're in the commercial office cleaning business and they're 
they actually are getting new clients by offering um, the uh, uh, office sanitizing service. And after that, they come in and, and uh, will uh, say, hey, as long as we're here sanitizing, why don't we clean everything and do a complete job? Uh, so they've used COVID as a way to win more business as opposed to an excuse for losing business or staying the same size. Um, I, I think I, I just go ahead. Here, back to you talking about setting sales goals. I was happy. I happened to be in a bank talking to a customer service person. Why doesn't matter? But I was talking to her and having conversation. I I lost you, Rick. That particular bank says to their customer service people, "You will make twenty calls per day." Sales calls and oh, I, I got a thing. It says my internet connection is unstable. Can you hear me, Craig? Uh, yeah, I can now. Uh huh. Yep. Okay. Well, I just point when you talk about sales goals, that was one of the things that bank said to their people: you will make twenty calls per day, mm -hmm. um, and that was one of their steps to set goals for sales contact for customer service people. So, just an example. Yep. All right. Um, so. Um, you need what steps in the sales process are the most important and why, what skills your salespeople need to succeed at, at those steps and carefully construct the teams to complement that, that whole process. Um, there, um, uh, it, that's a pretty general slide, I will admit. Uh, but I, as I'm, um, uh, I happen to be in the uh, employee benefits business before I got into SCORE. And our clients were usually uh, human resource uh, uh, people at client companies. And they were, um, uh, human resources were, seemed to be a majority of, of women. It was a job that, that they migrated to. Uh, so the uh, majority of my sales team were women. And uh, it just worked out great for, uh, for our company and for the, the women who worked for me because uh, they not only had a good time, uh, but they routinely met and exceeded their sales goals uh, because they were able to be empathetic and relate to, to the, the key uh, uh, clients that, that we had, um, just as one example. Uh, sales teams opt, you can do telemarketing, which is what uh, Rick just talked about at the bank. You can have a dedicated sales team. You can use manufacturer's reps, as we said, or in a store uh, front, uh, you need retail associates. Every business is different or some mix thereof. Evaluating the needs of your business. What is right for you? Uh, now that we know kind of how we're going to sell, what that sales team uh, consists of, uh, how, how will this help achieve my goals? How will it reach my target customers? How will I find qualified candidates? in my area uh, and um, how does this fit in my, in my budget? Uh, the, uh, you can't overspend on advertising, marketing and your sales team, but you can't under, under uh, sell either. Uh, and so make sure you know what you can afford. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about, um, about how to afford a sales uh, representative here in a few more slides. Motivating your sales team. Um, uh, sales people are motivated by goals and they're motivated by money. Uh, and so you need to set reasonable goals that can achieve. Uh, you've got to um, uh, talk about the performance measures. Now, inter interestingly enough, this includes the behaviors that lead to sales. So in Rick's example at the bank, they've found that uh, hopefully that making those 20 calls a day uh, that's a hundred calls a week that they get one new client. So a key performance measure is I'm just making, maybe they get five new clients or maybe whatever, but they, they should know that a certain level of, uh, of calls should result in a certain number of, of, uh, new, uh, clients. So measure that performance and make sure that you're getting the, the outcome that you're looking for. And that, because the, the behaviors that lead to sales are critical to get the sales. If, if, you're, if you're not getting sales or you're not growing the way you are, 
you need to work back up through the sales process and see where the failures are um, and what what isn't clicking. Uh, the payment formula for your salespeople, keep it very simple. Uh, that if, if you mess up on the formula, they'll be quick to tell you um, because they're, they uh, um, measure their success by money and how much they make. So they know the formula and they, uh, they, they adjust their work to maximize that payment. And, uh, and so be, keep it simple so that, that it's, uh, it can be easily discussed and easily communicated and easily calculated on payday. Um, the, uh, some, this is a range, uh, some people believe in minimum base pay with, um, uh, with, uh, 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 some commission or sales incentive. That's, it's hard to hire new people, uh, especially new young people, uh, because they don't have that, the commission coming in. So some people will pay new hires a little bit more. And then when they're ready to be productive, they move them over to a, a base pay plus a commission and make sure there are rules or uh, you'll be unhappy and they'll be unhappy. Uh, and uh, that's why have rules and, and keep it simple. Um, th this we some people are really motivated by commission. Some people are motivated by salary only. They like the security of knowing what's going to come in uh, every organization needs to find the balance between those things uh, and uh, that gets the right kind of people with the right kind of incentive to make your uh, uh, your business successful. Uh, typically, uh, if I had a salesperson that was happy with their just a just a just a salary, that probably would not be a salesperson that would um, generate the kind of new business that I would hope for. I like people that have some of their income at risk. Uh, it gets them up earlier. They stay at, uh, out on the in the field a little bit later uh, because they um, uh, they want that extra income uh, that's uh, associated with their extra successful efforts. So I, I'm a I'm a fan of um, of a for employees a mix of a base salary and commission. Uh, there for your outside people, your distributors and whatever, obviously a, a commission uh, paid only if they sell it, uh, a manufacturer's rep or a distributor is, is some kind of a commission arrangement, uh, but uh, they're not your employee uh, in that case. Uh, so if they're your employee, think about some mix uh, and that will attract the, the right kind of people uh, for your sales team. Uh, so commission can range from uh, enough to make it worth their while to something really significant if they uh, hit a home run. Uh, it kind of um, depends on your uh, on what you feel is necessary to provide the motivation. Uh, some factors to consider the sales cycle. Um, some sales uh, are immediate. People walk in the door, they buy, and they're gone. Uh, so, um, but others take, uh, might take a year or two or three years to, uh, for the bigger sales. So you can't pay a person commission and have them have no money for three years. And then all of a sudden they get the biggest check of their life because they won't be able to survive through that long sales cycle. Um, uh, job duties, uh, there are salespeople that are better at service than they are sales. And there are there are salespeople that can't, um, that don't bother to service. Make sure you know what the personality of your sales team is and have a balance between the people who are responsible for sales and the people who are responsible for uh, making your current customers happy and, uh, and uh, willing to uh, continue to buy and to buy more from you. Um, the tenured people are experienced and more valuable. Uh, experienced people that you might hire from outside that have those relationships, have that experience and can be productive right away, um, as opposed to a new person that you have to train is worth, uh, is worth money. And then also look around the industry. What does the sales force of your competitors consist of? How do they do it? And uh, factor that in 
uh, to and and consciously decide whether you want to mirror that or there's some good reason for you to be different uh, and then uh, go about building your sales team based on that analysis. Um, bonuses, um, uh, those are up to the, um, uh, up to the, um, uh, you, you may want to have a, a sales contest or some additional incentive beyond their, their uh, regular pay scale. Uh, some people are motivated by that. Uh, typically, they're paid at year end. Uh, keep it simple. Keep it motivated. Uh, and I, I like uh, if you have an organization that where everybody is a salesperson, as I uh, described, um, then make sure it's not just the salespeople that are uh, getting rewarded for a job well done at the end of the year. Um, the the people that are uh, keeping your your shop clean and the people that are interfacing with walk-ins and are talking to the, your, your customers every day on the phone, they're part of your sales team. And I believe in recognizing them uh, in a, in some uh, reasonable way. Uh, and it doesn't have to be very much, but that recognition is really important uh, for, um, uh, for your broader, uh, broader organization. Uh, excuse me. Just a second. I got a. Um, so um, we're. Uh, I'll let's see here. We'll keep. All right. So sales incentives. Some of them are non-monetary. You can have contests or comp or some special competition. Again, set clear goals, and uh, uh, they're best for short-term results. And uh, make it meaningful. Uh, can't be ten dollars, but it, it doesn't have to be life-changing either. And it also has to fit into your overall overall budget uh, for uh, running your business as a whole. Developing talent, um, if, make sure you take don't just hire them and put them out there. Uh, they need to they need to be trained. They need to stay fresh. Uh, they need to be competitive. So uh, uh, it's best to factor in a little bit of money and time for people to um, uh, to stay. Uh, fresh in their profession of sales. And, uh, and then in fact, I believe it is. So you, there's always new ideas, new things coming up, how to network better, um, uh, webinars like this, uh, in-house training so that they're properly representing your product. Uh, and then uh, keep an eye on the competition so that you, uh, you, you make sure that, that you're uh, uh, modeling or mirroring those best practices in the industry whatever those are currently, not what they were in the past. Uh, benchmarking sales, uh, you, you've, got to, you've got to know your history. You've got to know what your soul, you've got to know what your competition is. You've got to, you should know roughly what your market share is. Uh, if, if, you're, if you know uh, uh, that, that uh, there's from the library research that Brandy helps you with, uh, that the uh, that, that the market for your goods or services is a million dollars and your sales are a hundred thousand. Well, you've got a 10% market share. And is that good, bad? Are you happy with that? Uh, and and uh, at, is your industry growing? If your market was a million dollars last year, is it going to be $2 million this year? And are you geared up to, uh, to win in that, um, uh, in, in that, uh, uh, in, in that, condition or in, in that growing uh, industry. Uh, and you, so you've got to have, you don't know uh, if you've been successful until you've described success uh, and uh, put a, put a goal out there uh, and then compare and then benchmark yourself against the competition. Cause you may have had a great year. You doubled your business and then you find out your competition quadrupled it and you realize that you were a little too happy with your current performance or stuck too much in your own ways. Um, you can gather, it's amazing how much information can be gathered just by talking to customers, uh, going to the library and asking for some help in that area. Uh, assess the data as only you as a business uh, owner can because uh, you know your business and you know your market and then set a goal. I, I believe in setting reasonable goals so that you are more apt to be able to um, 
celebrate reaching those goals rather than the whole team feeling bad that a stretch goal was not met at the, at the end of the year. Um, so be reasonable, have gather data, assess it, and then put a goal out there on the blackboard or in the, in the sales plan uh, uh, for you and your team and uh, go for it. Um, uh, there are, I'll talk about um, tech, just a little bit about technology or customer relationship management. There's, there's just huge um, tools out there available. A lot of half, 80% of the people that, that pay the money for salesforce.com only use about one tenth of 1% of, of what it's uh, capable of doing, which, which means they wasted a lot of money. Um, so be reasonable about your CRM uh, approach, uh, but, um, uh, but make sure you realize that, uh, that it is important to have data uh, and uh, to keep track of who your customers are, uh, what, the, what, what the seasonality in your business is, uh, and uh, that your people, you and your people are managing time and can adjust the changes in the, in the industry. Uh, they should be simple and scalable relative to your business. Um, so uh, just to give you a salesforce.com uh, is the most popular one right now. It is so robust that Procter and Gamble and Avon use it as their, their base business tool for everything they do from inventory control uh, to knowing how much toothpaste is sitting on shelves at Walmart right now and how fast it's selling to paying their people to keep in tra track of their trucks. And uh, so uh, do you really need that in your business? And I would suggest that you probably don't, uh, but have a system uh, and, uh, and stick with it. Um, here are some helpful resources. Uh, and again, we'll provide a copy of this uh, over the, at the afterwards through Brandy if you want. Um, uh, here's salesforce.com, but again, you know, it would be great if you could afford them. And uh, so there are other, uh, other options out there uh, and uh, would help you uh, build the information you need to run your business. Um, sales organizations that your people could or, or could belong to, there's plenty of them out there. Uh, they're all pretty good. Uh, they, uh, but if you're, don't just send your salespeople off to any old seminar. Uh, make sure that you and your people are, have a, a training plan. Uh, there's sales compensation software. Uh, if you've kept your, your commission program and your program simple, you may not need all that much software, uh, but it's certainly out there. It would be great if you could all grow someday where you would need to take advantage of that. Um, so in review, Distribution channels are how the end user gets your product or service. Uh, it can be you directly, or it can be somebody you hire to do that for you. Uh, you've got to get out there and find leads, look for them in, in positive uh, information-based ways. Uh, you've got to determine prospects versus suspects. Uh, you've got to make that first contact and make it count. You've got to be knowledgeable about the cost of your business and their ability to deliver before you start negotiating so that you know if it's time to walk away or it's time to shake hands and make a deal and then get that deal done, know that it, knowing that it's a win-win uh, uh, outcome. Uh, there's multiple ways to create a sales team, uh, motivate them, uh, and, then, and then train them. Uh, again, it all depends on the needs of your business and uh, what it takes to access the, the target uh, markets that you've selected. And then benchmarking, uh, keep score, have a way to keep score so that you know that you're, uh, uh, that you're on the path to, to success and um, kicking uh, and, and being a, a winner and a market share leader in, in whatever business that you've selected. Uh, thank you, uh, I think I brought it in. Um, uh, a little bit under the wire here and we would have uh, time Rick and I would be happy to take any questions that that you have uh, before we close
Uh, yeah, uh, Susan, we're having a little trouble hearing you. If you could get a little closer to your speaker. Okay, I was saying that uh, I enjoyed your presentation, and I got a lot out of it because uh, some people don't like sales, but in a business, you have to learn to like it. Uh -huh. So I took some good notes out. All right. Well, good. I. It's uh, if you think of it as problem solving and helping people, it's a lot easier. <laughs> Any uh, anything else? If not, um, uh, we want to thank everybody for um, uh, for joining in today. We appreciate it, uh, and we'll uh, look forward to hearing from you if you're interested in some individual. Uh, mentoring that's that's what we do and uh, we'll uh, you've got our email addresses there that was in the early slide and maybe I'll I'll put it back up there real quick here if I can um, uh, here uh, right uh, right there so there, so I'm Craig Leslie, and then Rick Schofield was my able partner here today. And then, of course, the library is always available um, to help you. And we're partners with Brandy and her team there. Uh, so contact any one of them, and we'd be more than happy to help you. Uh, uh, Br Brandy, uh, any, anything that you would care to add before we sign off here today? Yes, thank you so much, Craig. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Rick, uh, for sharing your knowledge and expertise with our community this evening. Really appreciate it. It's always great to have you. SCORE is a wonderful partner for us. Um, and we're very happy that SCORE was able to make this possible tonight. Thank you all for attending tonight's workshop. Um, we hope you enjoyed it. Please take a few minutes to tell us what you thought about the program in the short event evaluation that I linked in the chat. I will also be sending out a follow-up email with that link, as well as um, all the links I shared in the chat to other resources, Craig and Rick's email addresses, if you didn't get a chance to jot them down. And um, we will let you know when this recording of this workshop is available on our YouTube channel too. So you can sort of soak it in some more. Um, Make it all the heart, memorize it, and put it in practice. It'd be fantastic. Our next virtual small business workshop with SCORE will be on Wednesday, November 10th at 6.30 p.m. And it's going to be on how to create a one-page business plan using the business model canvas method. Signups are now available, um, are now open at the link that I shared in the chat or on our website at www.howellibrary.org. Discover more of our upcoming events on our website. And thank you once again for joining us tonight. Craig, Rick, thank you. Thank you, Susan. Have a good one. Okay. You thank you. Yeah, bye, everybody. Thanks, Rick. Yep. Thank you, Craig. <laughs>